Hello homesteaders, it's time for part two of putting in this bloody washing machine. Part one was pretty easy. We just unpacked it from the box and took four bolts out of the back. There's nothing to it. And then this morning, I cut a section of the wall away so the washing machine would fit into the space that we have, that we want to put it into. Uh, the space was exactly 59.5 centimeters and the washing machine is 60 centimeters so I cut like a two inch or like a five centimeter piece out of the wall and that allowed us to get the washing machine in but once we got it in I had it plugged in I had it hooked up to the water I was just about to plug in the power and then I leant on it and the whole washing machine moved and uh, it was kind of like pivoting you know, like it was sort of, two of the legs were steady and two of them weren't. So you could sort of uh, move it back and forth or rock it. And then the whole machine, uh, after a short amount of time, would rock and rock and rock and then start to damage all of the sensitive parts inside the machine. So the only option is I went out and got a rubber mat. That's for after this. And some rapid setting cement. That's going to go into the corners because the floor isn't flat. What I need to do is I need to flatten that space down there, that square. You can see that that black square, and it needs to be as flat. As, oh fuck me! Mm, I thought what stinking like that. All right, so there's a cat poop on it. <laughs> all, all part of the bloody experience. <laughs> I thought, why does it stink like that? Well, all right, <laughs> okay. So, I'm not going to let that interfere with my video. No. Um, Alright, so I've got a bucket. Dominique's going to clean up that cat poop. Okay. Because all of a sudden, once the lino was pulled up, you could smell fresh uh, water or concrete or mould or something. And uh, the cat decided that was as close to nature as they could find. And it's a big one! <laughs> also, putting the cat litter on top of the heater probably didn't motivate them to use it <laughs> and that's the result anyway that's an interference that's a that's a that's a aside all right so i'm not going to use this whole bag uh, i'm probably going to put about half a bag in and then i'm going to put a little bit of water i want this to be as thick as possible it's going to be basically the consistency of uh, peanut butter or even toothpaste that's the good one toothpaste by the time I put it all into the edges everywhere. Uh, after that, it's going to take 30 minutes, it says, to dry. It should be strong. It should be able to fix holes and things. And basically, if it does this job of making the floor flat, I will be very happy at the end of this video. And then, so it's actually going to be kind of like a... Yeah, maybe this will be... Yeah, we'll just do this as the last video, but... Uh, we'll film it all the way uh, to plugging it in, um, wiggling it into the room, plugging it in, um, turning it on, and then trying it for the first time. Can you put a washing machine on with no clothes in it? Sure. We yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll try one cycle uh, without anything inside. Have a look what's the shortest cycle. 15 minutes? Don't know. 15 minutes. All right, 15 minutes is the shortest cycle, so we'll try that. Alright, this video is going to take the rest of the afternoon, but we're going to cut out the boring bits, like the cat poop getting taken away. And um, we will film the, the making of A Flat Floor by John Green, directed by Dominique Green. Me! Hi! I'm also a cleaner. Cleaner? Yeah, cleaner. This is the part where we're going to mix this quick dry cement. There's a bit more information on the back there. If you've never done this kind of thing before, the packet usually tells you as much information as you really need to know to get started. So don't be worried about using cement for the first time ever, or plaster, or anything like that. There's always going to be a set of instructions, and luckily a, a bunch of really good icons, so it's very clear how it works. And it's going to be perfect for our use, absolutely perfect. Alright, so this is how we bust it open with the corner of the trowel. get too close don't 
Don't breathe that in. It's not good for the lungs. Okay, I'll put a bit of water on there. If you're doing a little home project, you're not going to die from breathing this in. But if you're doing larger projects, like say uh, a driveway or uh, another room on the house or something, you might breathe enough of this stuff to get really, really sick or injured. I just use the trowel. I hope I didn't add too much water. I think the secret is to add as little water as it possibly can. I might have added too much water at this point, but that's okay. I'll just get to a good consistency. Very liquid. All right, don't worry, there won't be so much dust this time because it's landing on liquid. Having it a little bit fluid isn't bad though, because if you wanted to level out, let gravity do its thing, and gravity itself will help a very thin mix become very, very flat. The only way to do this properly is by hand. We have those rubber gloves. All right, all right, I'll do it with a glove. Second. These don't really expand like the uh, latex gloves, but the vinyl <laughs> might be a bit small for me. The vinyl gloves usually last longer than the uh, latex gloves because they're thicker, and they don't feel so rubbery. They don't go ear ear. They don't stick to itself. It's quite good. All right, it's just like any old mix. You just squeeze it between your fingers and, it, and in the, at the end of the day it really is the best way to mix the concrete. I'm not going to make it really thick, I'm going to have it this thin and I'd like to sort of start putting a little bit in the edges because as thin as it is I think it's going to be good. All right. <laughs> as thin as it is uh, it's going to flatten out very well. All right that looks pretty decent. It's runny, but still kind of thick. I'll make it maybe... No, I think that's a pretty good consistency. Come in here and watch this. You can't always tell where the slope is, but thankfully in this place we can see that from about here, it slopes down to the wall. So we're going to take some of our fairly liquid liquefied concrete and put it down. See, it's not so liquid. Do you have a water level with the bubble? Yeah, I got that. I got it. Luckily, you can see that it, it's, it's bending down in one place or along one edge, which means it'll be easier to look after. It'll be easier to deal with. <coughs> I'm going to pour all of this on. I'll show you what to do with the trowel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it properly, if it's too dark or whatever, but I'm just going to smush it a little bit into the... along the edge. It's a nice consistency, it rolls to the edge.
Yeah, I'm sure there's like a hole under here that kind of needs to be filled under the wall itself. So that's why I do the concrete right up to the very, very edge. It's going to be a celebration day. Mm. I like to go right up to the edge with that fat wave. Right up. It's like a cake. When it's done, we can point the heater at it. That home studio rescue show was on here. Mm. I'd send them this way. <clears throat> you can fix it. Does that come off? Yeah, off the lino. Yeah, okay. Sweet. G'day viewers, I did cut the last video short because what happened was I ended up just smoothing and smoothing and smoothing that uh, bit of concrete for far too long. It wasn't even really necessary in the end. What I found out was uh, I didn't have to do it. Still, here you can see the, uh, I've put the wall back where it was. If you wanted to, you could be a bit more pedantic and cover over it you know put the trim back on and whatever but this kitchen is not going to last forever we're going to get a new kitchen in a, a year or two so that will be fine we don't have guests all right here's the washing machine and dryer combo what happened in the long run was i found out and again you, you heard me speaking to my wife i don't know really anything about washing machines uh, I was even asking can you run a washing machine with no clothes in it it goes to show I don't know anything about this particular household appliance turns out at the bottom of every washing machine every washing machine has uh, little dials on the foot I'll see if I can film one hey Jamie are you approving of the placement? I'm sure he, he's not the one who pooped. It was a Jackie. Anyway, what happened in the long run is I put a piece of ply over the top, which is perfectly square, and a bit of rubber on the bottom, which is normal for most people. But I can't film it. I tried to, but there are these little dials. And you dial... Jamie. <laughs> You dial the wheels, or sorry, the feet up or down. So when you get them, all the feet are up. If necessary, you just dial one foot down and then the whole thing will be flat on the surface. Um, you can, you don't have to move the dials around very much on the washing machine to get a result. It was not really necessary for me even to put the concrete in there in the first place. 
because I could have just uh, you know, wound down one of the feet and the washing machine would have fit. But uh, because I wanted to put the washing machine on something that I was sure was flat, I wouldn't have been able to put that piece of ply down there as the floor was because the floor wasn't even. So the ply wouldn't have sat flat. But because now the floor is flat, the plywood is flat, the bit of rubber is flat, um, the feet thing wasn't necessary. So I didn't need to wind down any feet. But I spent, I don't know, like 10 bucks on concrete. Maybe, no, it was like 7 bucks. The small bags are very expensive. Unnecessary. In the future, just dial down the foot of the washing machine and uh, you'll find that it does sit flat. As long as it doesn't move, nothing's going to be damaged within the machine. And if the washing machine sits in whichever form, still, while it's working, then it's functioning properly. Uh, as long as it doesn't move, everything's fine. Putting the dryer on top of the washer is completely normal. But again, we had to unscrew the wall to put the washing machine in and then redo that and unscrew the wall again to put the dryer on top. So let this be a lesson to anyone buying a tiny house with a tiny kitchen. Uh, you will need to renovate, but don't renovate too early. The advice is wait one year living in your new home to see what really has to change. Clearly, <laughs> the kitchen needs to be improved upon it's quite quite small and we're going to definitely put up some shelves or some cabinets or something uh, to save us this horrid horrid mess we have to live with but anyway as far as washing machines go I learned a lot I know you didn't want to wait half an hour or whatever to find out that you can just dial down the feet on the washing machine but I was trying to do the right thing I did make a flat surface I did put a flat bit of ply on there and the washing machine sits perfectly still while it's working. But I'm sure most people know these machines have movable feet. All right, that's the lesson for today. Um, thanks for watching anyhow. That was a mistake of mine. Learn from my mistake. And uh, it was like, you know, an extra day or two of work for no good reason. You know, a day of putting in the concrete, a day of waiting for it to dry. Uh, just time wasted, unnecessary. But it was the first little project we did in the house and we needed the washing machine really bad. Thank God we've got it now. Okay, questions or comments, leave them below if you like. I answer the ones that are interesting enough or direct questions, no problem at all. Thanks for tuning in. John Green, Green Ideas, right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.